Hello, welcome to Juvenile Justice. I'm Bonnie Glenn. Going through the court system can be traumatic for a young person and their family. It can also be expensive for taxpayers. Prosecuting a juvenile misdemeanor case can cost thousands of dollars, but the Partnership for Youth Justice Diversion Program is a way to keep kids with first-time and low-level offenses out of the court system, but still hold them accountable in their own communities. Well, we were talking about that today and stuff. They're not judges, they're community volunteers. I want to welcome you to Diversion. My name's Michelle, and this is Terry, and that's David, and we three are volunteers who've been trained by King County Superior Court. Their job is to work with kids who've gotten into trouble and hold them accountable, not in a courtroom, but in their own community. But you know, you can still get in trouble for being an accomplice, right? Uh -huh. They're the ones that listen to your case and read your police report and decide how you can best uh, be held accountable for your actions and also make up for it within your community. This board serves the Renton community. It's one of 23 boards around King County. Prosecutors often divert juvenile misdemeanor cases here instead of sending the case to a regular judge. We are like trying clothes on and stuff and we ended up in the same fitting room. I took a few things and she took a lot of things. Kids do dumb things and I think everyone can probably imagine or or remember when they were a kid and you know threw some eggs at someone's house or maybe shoplifted a candy bar and diversion allows for a particular individual to be held accountable but maybe not as formally as the court system would. Any time a youth doesn't have to come before me, it's good. Coming to juvenile court and facing justice usually means that there was a problem, that there's been a lot of pain and unhappiness and consumption of time and resources. Coming to court generally is not a good thing. What's your grades like? Have good grades. We take the time to get to know the kids. We get to know what's going on in their school. We talk a little bit about the family. We talk about, you know, what their interests are and what their plans are and how this will affect them on a long-term basis. If it was your purse, what would you feel if someone had taken your purse? We show the kids who we meet with that the community cares about them, that the, com the community doesn't approve of, you know, the choices they've made, and the community wants to help them figure out a way to make things right so they can put it behind them. Making it right might include restitution for victims, apology letters, community service, anger management or anti-shoplifting classes. The boards work with the kids and their families to create a diversion agreement. Okay, after talking amongst ourselves, we come up with the following consequences for your actions. First, we're going to ask you to complete 10 hours of counseling. When the kids successfully complete diversion, they can opt to have their criminal history destroyed. Their past mistakes don't have to follow them. Bottom line is it works. Whatever we're doing, whatever philosophy we use, you know, whatever approach we take, it works. Our kids get in trouble less, they generally don't come back to us, and 95% of them complete diversion successfully. Paying back and moving on is what diversion is all about. You made a mistake. Put it behind you. You got a lot of growing to do. Joining me now to talk more about diversion is area manager Matthew David and Jim Nickerson, who is a Superior Court Advisor for the Renton Community Accountability Board. Welcome. Thank you for having us. You know, uh, it was just wonderful, um, you know, hearing about the stories of young people and how diversion has made a difference with them. Uh, to have a better understanding with the community, Matthew, if you could tell me a little bit more about the CAPS. What actually are CAPS, Community Accountability Boards? How many members are there? Well, um, in King County, we have 23 Community Accountability Boards. And these are boards comprised of volunteers from the community. We have about 300 volunteers that staff these 23 boards. Um, each board um, has 
about three, two to three volunteers in the court advisor that meets with kids and families where the youth has been arrested for a primarily juvenile misdemeanor offenses and provide an alternative to the formal juvenile court system and a way to help them prevent a help them prevent um, obtaining a criminal record as a result of the arrest. Uh, the, the boards will meet with the youth and the family together and explain the, the process, um, explain their purpose, and kind of go through how the meeting is going to progress. And then they interview the youth and the parents individually. Um, after these interviews, they then confer among themselves and decide what will go into the accountability plan, um, which we call a diversion agreement. Okay, so let me stop there. So technically this is something, a cab, whereby someone can voluntarily decide to, be, to participate, correct? Right. Um, um, for the most part, first and second time misdemeanors are eligible for diversion. And nobody has to go through diver diversion. Diversion is a, is a process they can opt into if, if we offer it to them. Um, most people do because of the benefits and the, um, as opposed to going through the court system, are, are, are pretty significant. And um, when you say benefits, what kind of benefits are you talking about? They are able to never have to set foot in the juvenile courthouse. Um, the meetings, the diversion meetings are held in the communities where they live and they're held accountable by their neighbors. Uh, as opposed to going to court, which can take two or three days and is quite an expensive proposition for families, if they opt to go through the diversion program, uh, they, the, I mean, while there is a diversion fee, it is a small fraction of the cost of what it costs to go through the whole court process. It's a one-time meeting with the accountability board as opposed to potentially three days downtown at the juvenile courthouse. And the, the end result is that they don't obtain a criminal record and they can truthfully say they've never been convicted of a crime after successfully completing their diversion agreement. Now for the type of crimes that can um, that are eligible for diversion is that how is that is that statutorily? Yeah um, the statute says that all first-time misdemeanors must be referred to a diversion program and second time diversion um, uh, second time misdemeanors may be referred to the to a diversion program at the discretion of the prosecutor. In King County we divert almost all of the first and second time misdemeanor offenses. And most of the families who we offer diversion to do choose to go through diversion. Okay. And so the way that it works is that then someone, uh, if it's a first or second time low level offense um, uh, by statute, those particular cases uh, would be referred to um, a diversion. And that would go to you at the King County uh, Superior Court, is that correct? Right. My program is called Partnership for Youth Justice. Mm -hmm. and. The cases are referred to us from the prosecutor. The prosecuting attorney's office sends us the cases that are eligible for diversion, and we contact the families and offer them diversion, I'll offer them the opportunity to go through diversion. Um, we um, send them a letter which explains kind of what the rights are. We give them the opportunity to speak to a lawyer if, uh, if they want to do that before they make the decision. And then if they choose to go through diversion, we, we send the case to the closest community accountability board to where, to where they live. And being that we have 23 community accountability boards throughout the county, as far north as Bothell and as far south as Enumclaw and pretty much everywhere in between, it's usually pretty close to where they are. So it's, um, it's not much of an inconvenience for, for them to go to a diversion meeting in the evening as opposed to court downtown. Now, how long have these community accountability boards been in existence? Well, the first community accountability board was established in Renton in 1959. And so this is our 50th year of diverting cases out of the juvenile court system to community-run boards. Mm -hmm. Well, and of course, and having you here, Jim. Uh, now, Jim, you've been with the community accountability boards for how many years now? About 16 years. Wow. And so uh, you've been working with kids for 16 years. Um, and, and what have you? What kind of experience have you said as, as far as when working with youth? How, how is that for the kids that come through there? Have you seen anything over the years, changes? Have things changed much with youth? The youth, uh, I think it's a little more sophisticated these days. Kids have tougher decisions to make. There's a lot more input, media input, uh, societal thing. Um, information comes to kids a lot quicker than it did 15, 16 years ago. Uh, the program itself